Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 5. George Brandes. 1842-1927 by William Morton Payne The man of letters who devotes himself chiefly or wholly to criticism is an essentially modern type. Although the critical art has been practiced in all literary periods, it has not until the present century enlisted anything like the exclusive attention of writers of the highest order of attainment but has rather played a subordinate part beside the constructive or creative work to the performance of which such men have given their best energies in the case of some writers such as voltaire and samuel johnson we recognize the critical spirit that informs the bulk of their work yet are compelled on the whole to classify them as poets or historians or philosophers even coleridge who wrote no inconsiderable amount of the best literary criticism in existence is chiefly remembered as a poet even lessing one of the fountainheads of authoritative critical doctrine owes to his plays the major part of his great reputation as for such men as Ben Jonson and Dryden, Lamb and Shelley, Goethe and Heine, their critical utterances, precious and profound as they frequently are, figure but incidentally among their writings, and we read these men mainly for other reasons than that of learning their opinions about other people's productions for examples of the man of letters considered primarily as critic we must then look to our own century and we find the type best illustrated by such men as saint beve tan brunetier and the subject of the present sketch it is indeed a rather remarkable fact that the most conspicuous figure of literary denmark at the present time should not be a poet or a novelist, but a critic, pure and simple. For this is the title which must be given to George Brandes. Not only is his attitude consistently critical throughout the long series of his writings, but his form and matter are also avowedly critical, so much so that hardly one of his score or more of published volumes calls for classification in any other than the critical category even when he takes us with him upon his travels to france or russia with the best intentions in the world as to the avoidance of quote, shop end quote, he finds himself in the end talking about the literature and politics of those countries one of his latest books Udenlandske Igni og Personlegator, Foreign Parts and Personalities, has a preface with the following opening paragraph. Quote, One gets tired of talking about books all the time, even the man whose business it is to express himself in black and white has eyes like other people, and with them he perceives and observes the variegated visible world, its landscapes, cities, plain, and cultivated men, plastic art. For him, too, does nature exist, the capital N for nature. He, too, is moved at sight of such simple happenings as the fall of the leaves in October. He, too, is stirred as he gazes upon a waterfall, a mountain region, a sunlit glacier, a Dutch lake, and an italian olive grove he too has been to arcadia yet half the contents of the volume thus introduced must be described as the work of the critic not only are the set papers upon such men as taine renan maupassant deliberate critical studies but the sketches of travel likewise are sure to get around to the art and literature of the countries visited. 
the life of criticism in the larger sense comes from wide observation and a cultivation of the cosmopolitan spirit it must be said of brandes that he is a critic in the large sense that he has taken for his province the modern spirit in all its varied manifestations the very title of his chief work main currents in the literature of the nineteenth century shows him to be concerned with the broad movements of thought rather than with matters of narrow technique or the literary activity of any one country least of all his own it was peculiarly fortunate for denmark that a critic of his type should have arisen within her borders a quarter century ago the scandinavian countries lie so far apart from the chief centers of european thought that they are always in danger of lapsing into a narrow self-sufficiency so far as intellectual ideals are concerned danish literature has been made what it is chiefly by the mediation of a few powerful minds who have kept it in touch with modern progress by holberg who may almost be said to have brought humanism into denmark by Ohnschlager, who made the romantic movement as powerful an influence in denmark as it was in germany by brandes who beginning his career just after the war in which denmark lost her provinces and became as embittered toward germany as france was to become a few years later strove to prevent the political breach from extending into the intellectual sphere and helped his fellow countrymen to understand that thought and progress are one and have a common aim although nations may be many and antagonistic there is much significance in the fact that the name of emigrant literature is given to the first section of his greatest work he thus styles the french literature of a century ago the work of such writers as chateaubriand senancourt constant and madame de stal because it received a vivifying impulse from the emigration from the contact forced or voluntary of the french mind with the ideals of german and english civilization it has been the chief function of brandes during the whole of his brilliant career to supply points of contact between the intellectual life of denmark and that of the rest of europe to bring his own country into the federal republic of letters a glance at the course of his life and at the subjects of his books will serve to outline the nature of the work to which his energies have been devoted a jew by race george morris cohen brandes was born february fourth eighteen forty two he went through his academic training with brilliant success studied law for a brief period and then drifted into journalism and literature a long visit to paris eighteen sixty six to seven gave him breadth of view and the materials for his first books esthetisk studia esthetic studies then fransk esthetic french ascetics and a volume of critiker og portretar criticisms and portraits a later visit to foreign parts eighteen seventy to one brought him into contact with Taine, Renan, and Mill, all of whom influenced him profoundly. In 1871 he began to lecture on literary subjects, chiefly in Copenhagen, and out of these lectures grew his Hovid Strominger e det nitend a hundreds litortur, main currents in the literature of the 19th century a work that in the course of about ten years extended to six volumes and must be considered not only the author's capital critical achievement but also one of the greatest works of literary history and criticism that the nineteenth century has produced the division of the subject is as follows one emigrant literature two 
the romantic school in germany three the reaction in france four naturalism in england five the romantic school in france six young germany in spite of the growing fame that came to him from these masterly studies Brandes felt the need of a larger audience than the Scandinavian countries could offer him, and in 1877 changed his residence from Copenhagen to Berlin, a step to which he was in part urged by violent antagonism engendered at home by the radical and uncompromising character of many of his utterances. It was not until 1883 that he again took up residence in his own country, upon a guarantee of 4,000 kroner, about $1,000 annually, for 10 years, secured by some of his friends, the condition being that he should give courses of public lectures in Copenhagen during that period. Among the works not yet named, mention should be made of his volumes upon Holberg, Tegner, Kierkegaard, Ferdinand Lassalle, and the Earl of Beaconsfield. These brilliant monographs are remarkable for their insight into the diverse types of character with which they deal, for their breadth of view, felicity of phrase, and originality of treatment. There are also several collections of miscellaneous essays with such titles as Dansk Lichter, Danish Poets, Dansk Personlichter, Danish Personalities, Det Modern German Bruts, Made, Men of the Modern Awakening, and Udenlandske Eigne og Personlichter, Foreign Parts and Personalities. The latest publication of Brandes is a careful study of Shakespeare, a work of remarkable vigor, freshness, and sympathy. As a critic, Brandes belongs distinctly to the class of those who speak with authority, and has little in common with the writers who are content to explore the recesses of their own subjectivity and record their personal impressions of literature. Criticism is for him a matter of science, not of opinion, and he holds it subject to a definite method and body of principles. A few sentences from the second volume of his Ovid Struminger will illustrate what he conceives that method to be. Quote, First and foremost, I endeavor everywhere to bring literature back to life. You will already have observed that while the older controversies in our literature, for example, that between Heiberg and Hulk, and even the famous controversy between Bagason and Owenslager have been maintained in an exclusively literary domain and have become disputes about literary principles alone. The controversy aroused by my lectures, not merely by reason of the misapprehension of the opposition, but quite as much by reason of the very nature of my writing, has come to touch upon a swarm of religious social and moral problems it follows from my conception of the relation of literature to life that the history of literature i teach is not a history of literature for the drawing room i seize hold of actual life with all the strength i may and show how the feelings that find their expression in literature spring up in the human heart now the human heart is no stagnant pool or idyllic woodland lake it is an ocean with submarine vegetation and frightful inhabitants the literary history and the poetry of the drawing-room see in the life of man a salon a decorated ballroom the men and the furnishings polished alike in which no dark corners escape illumination let him who will Look at matters from this point of view, but it is no affair of mine. End quote. 
the boldness and even the ruthlessness which characterize much of the author's work were plainly foreshadowed in this outspoken introduction and he has grown more rather than less uncompromising during the quarter century that has elapsed since they were spoken matthew arnold would have applauded the envisagement of literature as quote, criticism of life end quote, but would have deplored the sacrifice of sweetness to gain increased intensity of light brandes came back from contact with the european world full of enthusiasm for the new men and the new ideas for comte and taine for renan and mill and spencer and wanted his recalcitrant fellow countrymen to accept them all at once they were naturally taken aback by so imperious a demand, and their opposition created the atmosphere of controversy, in which Brandes has ever since, for the most part, lived, with slight effort to soften its asperities, but, it must be added, with the ever-increasing respect of those not of his own way of thinking. On the whole, his work has been healthful and stimulating. It has stirred the sluggish to a renewed mental activity and has made its author himself one of the most conspicuous figures of what he calls det modern zenumbrud the modern awakening william morton Payne.